This is chapter six, lesson two, all about parallelograms. So sides and angles of parallelograms, a quadrilateral, a four-sided polygon with both pairs of opposite sides parallel is a parallelogram. Here are four important properties of parallelograms. We're actually gonna go over six total today in this lesson, um, but here's the first four. So the first one says, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So not only are opposite sides parallel, they are also the same size. So PS is congruent to QR and also PQ is congruent to SR, right? The opposite sides, both pairs, are congruent to each other. Next, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, that's what all these are gonna start with, then its opposite angles are congruent. So angles opposite from each other are diagonal angles, right? So here, angles S and Q are gonna be congruent. And also, let me find a different color, I'll do it in green, angles P and R, they're diagonal, so they're gonna be congruent to each other. Now, P and R aren't necessarily the same size as S and Q, but they are the same size as each other, and S and Q are the same size as each other, right? So opposite angles, diagonal angles, are congruent. Um, next, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So if opposite angles are the same size, adjacent angles like P and S here, or S and R, I'm kind of drawn all over this, but hopefully you can still tell. These guys will always add up to 180. S and Q are the same size. So if S is 60, Q is 60, but S and P are supplementary. So if S is 60, P would have to be 120, right? They're whatever they need to be to add up to 180. So S and R are supplementary. R and Q are supplementary. Q and P are supplementary. P and S are supplementary. So angles next to each other on either side of each other are always gonna add up to 180. And then last, if a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, oh sorry, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram that has one right angle, if one of the angles is 90 degrees, then all four have to be 90 degrees. That's just a rule for a parallelogram. So if I have um, this guy right here, and the first thing about it I know is that this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. And then I tell you that this is a 90 degree angle. I automatically know, I didn't realize you can see that. I automatically know that these other three angles have to be 90 degrees as well. Because if this is parallel to this, then this angle has to be the same as this angle. And if these two lines are parallel, then this angle has to be the same as this guy, right? They're all 90 degrees. So that's one rule about parallelograms. If one of the four angles is right, they're all right. All right, so based on those four facts, let's do some math down here. So it says, find the value. I hope you guys can see this, okay. Find the value of each variable in the following parallelograms. I'm gonna use my red pen. 3x, 4y. How do I know what to set those equal to? Well, it says these are all parallelograms. And it shows me that one of the angles is 90. So based on that bottom rule here, if one of the angles is right, they're all right. If one of these if, is one, if one of these is 90 degrees, they're each 90. So 3x equals 90 and 4y equals 90. And I can solve for both of those. Divide by 3, x equals 30. Divide by 4, y equals 9 divided by 2 is 45. 45 divided by 2 is 22 and a half. Works for me. Okay, number two, uh, find all the variables. So here, 8y is the length of this side. This side is 88. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So 8y equals 88. So y equals 10. And this side is 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. So I know they all must be 90. This guy is 6x. 
So I know 6x equals 90. Divide both sides by 6. x equals uh, 90 divided by, divided by 3, the top and the bottom. That's 30 divided by 2, 15. Okay, number 3. I have all these sides are marked congruent, right? And it told me in the directions it's a parallelogram, so I know all the sides are congruent to each other. I can set them equal to each other. 6x is equal to 12. So x is equal to 2. And 3y and 12 are marked congruent, so 3y equals 12. Divide by 3, y has to equal Four. Number four, um, parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent here and angles next to each other are supplementary. Well, I can't set 3y and 12x equal to each other because I can't solve for one if I don't know what the other is, right, the variables. But I know 6x and 12x are going to add up to 180, so I'm going to start there. That's 18x equals 180, so x has to equal 10. Once I know x equals 10, then I know that this is 120 degrees, so I know 3y has to equal 120. And then divide both sides by 3, so y has to equal 40. Two more. Number 5. Here, I have a 55 degree angle, 60, 2y, 5x, right? So how can I use these to help myself? Well, I know angles next to each other are supplementary. So this whole big angle here is made up of two smaller angles. 60 and 55 is 115. So 2y plus 115 is going to equal 180. That means 2y is going to equal 65. So y has to equal 64 would be 32 or 32.5, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. And if this whole thing is 115, 5x and 115 add up to 180. So 5x has to equal 65, which means x equals 13. And last but not least on this first page, we know sides opposite from each other are congruent. So first, I can't set 2y equal to 72x, because I gotta know what one of them is to solve for the other, but I can set 30x equal to 150. Divide by 30, x equals 5. So if that's the case, 72 times 5 equals 360. 0, 5 times 7, 30, yeah, this would be 360. So 2y has to equal 360, which means y would have to equal 180. Makes sense. I mean, if this whole side is 150 and it's little, it makes sense that this long side would be 360 over double this, right? And if this is 360, Y would have to be 180 for two of them to equal 360. Does that make sense?